Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to Channel BK. My name is Brian. Shitty lighting, computer lighting, and if I look like shit, work is slowly killing me. But welcome to a list. This is the first list, singles of 2015. Now obviously it's the same rules, I just picked the singles that were released this year or had music videos and all that sort of stuff. Just because it makes it easier and it makes it a little bit more official, at least to me, even though clearly the album that's up here now that had the number one song last year was not a single, I don't think. But you know what? I didn't find a song better than that. And I didn't put any of the Sun Kill Moon songs on the list. And I thought it was appropriate. But here we go. At number 50, Fucking Up the Count with Freddie Gibbs. 49, we got 3,500, Travis Scott with Future and 2 Chains. And at 48, we got Annie by Neon Indian. 47, we have Here by Alessia Cara. 46, Irresistible by Fall Out Boy. And 45, the tribute to Paul Walker, See You Again, Wiz Khalifa, Charlie Puth. 44, A New Wave, Sleater, Kenny. And at number 43, Like Me, Joey Badass, BJ the Chicago Kid. Both of them killed that track, smooth track. 42, we have Fade Away by Logic. And at 41, we got I Know Where the Honey Bling. By Drake. 40, we have J-Rock with the Black Hippie members, Vice City. 39, we got Bugatti Beebs, Love Yourself. Very good track. I really liked it. Justin Bieber, you got me with that. And at 38, we got Ship to Wreck, Florence and the Machine. 37, we got The Hills by The Weeknd. That drop, though. Ooh, that drop. It's hot. It's really hot. 36, Mess Around by Cage the Elephant. And at 35, Coffee from Wild Heart, the last Miguel album. 34 is Chance the Rapper and Saba, Angels. At number 33, we got Electro Pop Trio, Churches with Leave a Trace. And at number 32, we got Lift It Up, 1985 by Passion Pit. Going through this list, I completely forgot about these tracks. This track especially really grew on me. 31 from the heartbreaking Volney Cura by Bjork, Lion Song. Great track, great track. And at number 30, we have January 10th, 2014. The world is a beautiful place, and I am no longer afraid to die. I got it. 29, A Chateau Lobby, number 4, by Father John Misty. Great, charismatic track, some great lyrics, some great instrumentation. This was a really great album, and I thought this was especially one of the highlights on it. 28, we got a bit of a change-up for the 1975 for their new album coming out next year with UGG. Their last single before this, I was kind of a fan of, but I really loved this. I think Maddie was great on it, and I thought the actual instrumentation and the very colorfulness of the track was just really fun. 27, we got Sparks by Beach House. Super raw track, just, just heavy and just raw, and the guitar chords were great. And at 26, we got Chance the Rapper again, but as a feature with Action Bronson, Baby Blue. Why you gotta act like a bitch? Number 25, we got a song from an album I was kind of looking forward to, and I ended up really liking. I was really surprised with the consistency of this album. Flesh Without Blood, Grimes, definitely one of my favorite tracks on here. I just loved the heaviness of it, and again, it's just such a nice sounding track, amongst other tracks on the album, and I thought Grimes did a really great job. 24 was The Trickery, that is Mac Miller with 100 Grandkids. I was really upset, for at least for me, the album didn't really follow up what this track did, but I thought he was super clever, I loved the production, I thought Mac Miller had a lot of charisma, and again, when I heard this track, I was so addicted to it, and I think this track really... I, for me, obviously, sadly made me excited for this, his album because it let me down a little bit, but still, this track was great. And at 23, though, we go to some more folk indie rock music with Kurt Vile, the opening to his last album, Pretty Pimpin'. I love sort of the buildup of this track, and I think Kurt Vile's lyrics and his delivery are just great. I love this track. 22 is a track that had me dancing and dancing and dancing when I first heard it. Lyrically, not necessarily one of the strongest songs ever, but I think musically especially, just how the song was put together was just so complete, and it was full, and it just was so much fun, and it just made me feel so great. Adventure of a Lifetime by Coldplay. Man, this track is just on repeat like crazy. But now, to the dark side at 21, was the track from I Don't Like Shit, I Don't Go Outside by Earl Sweatshirt, Grief. Very claustrophobic feeling track. I love just the heavy, deep synths 
and just the bass line. It's just heavy and Earl's just so great on it and his wordplay and everything is just crazy awesome. At number 20, we have sort of a group that is pop but is also hip hop but also R&B. Weird mix and I was really glad that I got to hear of them this year because I was really excited when I really enjoyed their album. That's Young Fathers. And I believe the first single that came off of it, Shame. Very R&B, pop inspired, and just such an upbeat track. Great vocals, great delivery, great. 19 is very much a difficult choice, but I obviously went with the whole idea of singles or songs that were released. So should have known better. Sufian Stevens, very great track. Again, I was annoyed that, you know, there's so many tracks on this album that I could have easily put in this list, but where I want to go with it, this kind of was there. And again, just like a lot of tracks on this album, songwriting was beautiful and his delivery and just the musicality. This obviously was a little bit more of an upbeater sounding song. It kind of had a more happy, positive vibe to it, but definitely great all the same. At 18, we got Willing and Able, Disclosure featuring Quabs. When I first heard it, I thought it was so smooth, and it was just so, like, sexy in a way, and I loved the vocals on it, and I loved the sound of the production, and definitely, for me, one of the highlights on the new Disclosure album. 17 is a track that I think is going to throw people off, because it was a song, obviously, that was actually released, and you could hear and performed. And it is a Macklemore and Ryan Lewis track with none other than Leon Bridges, Kevin. Definitely was, in my opinion, the highlight out of these three songs they have released, Macklemore and Ryan Lewis, for their new album. And I love the topic and sort of him talking about a friend who died of overdosing on pills and the story he tells and sort of the connecting lines to the drug world and also of the medication world of like this is you, the, there it's it's just drug dealers all the same but it's like they're more you know at this medical level and I think this is when I think Macklemore is on his shit and I think it was such a great track and this was again out of all three of the songs they released the time where I thought the hook fit it didn't take away from the song and I think Leon Bridges' voice is just great and it adds so much soul and I love the production Ryan Lewis is a god 16 is on the other side of the hip-hop spectrum that is the powers that be by death grips that build that drop and it just kind of keeps going from there and it's insane but you know what I don't know what I'm about to do 15 again another hip-hop track a highlight on a double album that I think shouldn't have been a double album because I thought there was a lot of filler moments, but that is for Vince Staples, North North, Clams Casino, I salute you, you're a beautiful son of a bitch, this beat was haunting, first time I heard it, I was instantly jaw dropped, the atmosphere and Vince's delivery and his storytelling is just perfected on this track. 14 is Thundercat, with some help from Flying Lotus. And Kamazi Washington with them changes, the progressions, just Thundercat in general. And even the songwriting was definitely just great on here. And definitely a part of an album that I wish just went on for so long. Because I was just so into that album. But definitely a highlight track from here. 13, Untouchable, Pusha T. Pusha T I don't think disappoints. And in terms of something like this or numbers on the boards and stuff. I don't really know where this is. I think this is still a great track. But you know what? I don't think we should be comparing. I think it's just Pusha T just keeps putting out dope tracks. And Timbaland did a great job with that beat. And at number 12, we go more to the rock world. The opening to the new Muse album, shockingly, Dead Inside. This song is electrifying and it really got me excited to listen to this album. Even though I thought the album kind of ended up not delivering. I didn't think it was as trash as some people made it out to be. Because songs like this I thought were great. And again... I think Muse for me, they get me whenever it's something that's kind of corny-ish or whatever. But I even think the songwriting on here was pretty good for the most part. And I thought Matt was great on it too. And I just loved sort of how it's a little bit more electronic and then it just grows into this big rock anthem. I loved it. Another song that had such a great build to it as well is my number 11 track, R.I.P. to My Youth by The Neighborhood. And again, just like Muse... This was a track on an album that I was like, okay, I'm so pumped for this album. And the album, I think this more so than 
Muse really let me down. But again, songwriting, structurally, and as a band where they are now, I think this was the perfect example of where the neighborhood can go. It was such a great song and it just the mood of it was so great. I love the organs and just the sweeping guitar riffs. It's so epic. Number 10. Number 10. Garden of Lavender by Sun Kill Moon. Yes, it was released, so I could do that. I could put that there. But the huge epic song off his new album, Universal Themes, when I first heard it, I was listening to it constantly. I just loved the mood of this track. And then it sort of goes into a completely different area, and then it goes back down again. And this album, you know, obviously something like Benji as well, where Sun Kill Moon's sort of doing this weird sort of diary approach with his lyrics. And this track is no different. And it's just... It's so enthralling and so vivid, and I think it holds my attention the whole time. Every single time. I try to listen to this song fully every single time because I think it's great. Nine is more in the electronic world with Loud Places, Jamie XX featuring Rami, and I just love the vibe to this. I love the big build at the end, and it's just such a great track. It really puts you in a place. And it puts you in sort of a location. Like I think that's what's so great about this track. And it it's kind of moody but it's also a little bit fist pumping it's just such a great anthem and definitely one of the highlights on in color which was jamie xx's last album eight is actually a surprise because i feel like for some reason since i thought it was good the album at least i can't have a track like this but that's eventually by tame impala listening to this track again a little bit more for this list i was just like oh my god this track is so great i love it it's huge and epic and I love sort of the chorus breakdown it's just I thought it's such a well put together track seven run away with me Carly Rae Jepsen don't need to say too much first time I heard it I knew this was gonna be in my top 10 love the track love Carly on it love the production that saxophone's great and I just think the huge chorus is great the songwriting sharp and that's all I can really say I just love it oh baby Oh, number six is also kind of the same thing, but more so in the fist pumping way. You and Weird Cities, Jeff Rosenstock. I was so glad to hear this album and to finally listen to Jeff Rosenstock. And man, I love <sighs> this track is just so just fun and energetic and loud and just raunchy. And it's just so much fun and definitely a track like this just gets you in such a great mood. And number five, we have a song from an album by Alabama Shakes, Sound and Color. That's not the track though, Don't Wanna Fight. This track is just heavy and funky and soulful. And just the, br once the song starts and Britney starts just belting out these great lyrics with her great voice, that just the vibe of the song is just so infectious and just grabs a hold of you. At number four, we got Sister Cities, Hop Along. Vocally, this band is incredible, and musically, it's just great indie rock. And I could have honestly put any song from this album on this list, but I think Sister Cities was sort of the one that, going back and listening through, that was, I think, the perfect representation of what I love so much about the band. Number three is, to me, one of the best rap songs in a while, and this is an artist I've been lucky enough to watch grow and I'm so excited to see where he goes after this but it's from Mick Jenkins P's and Q's and it's such a short track and you just it's so odd because when it's over you want more but it doesn't feel like he left you cold like it's like oh that I want more but it and it's so great Mick's gonna go places and just his wordplay just the way he builds this track and just that guitar chord is just so perfect and the beat is oh my god it's great and number two we have a track from again another album i thought was very meh but it was electrifying and i could not stop listening to it and i don't know if i'm supposed to be embarrassed to say it even though i don't think so i just i could not stop listening to it that's the wolf from mumford and sons i think vocally it was great and just sound wise it was just powerful and engaging and again, I could not let up. Something like Muse or The Neighborhood. This was a track from an album that I obviously didn't really like, but the song itself was just too damn good to not like. And at number one, it's obvious who it is, but what song? I could have picked a lot of Kendrick Lamar songs, 
and I have personal favorites and obviously there's a lot of videos that he released so it was kind of great and I could have went with a lot of different ways I could have went to the King Kunta route I could have went to the these walls route because that's actually personally my favorite song on the album or I could have went to all right but I think there was always one track that held my attention the most when I first heard it because even though I love all those tracks nothing really made me stop and just kind of think like the black or the berry did it was just raw just so powerful and really just showed that Kendrick was on a mission to do something and I think he pulled it off and this track just sonically and lyrically was it was top tier rap it definitely was something that I always would go back to and just revisit some of the lyrics he said because as a piece of work, like that song in particular, being broken down by like prize winning like poets and stuff, there's something about that that makes it worthwhile. So that's my list of 2015. Guys, put your list in the comments below or are some of these songs up there with that too. If you liked, please like and please subscribe because I'm going to be doing more lists. Albums should be coming later in the week. Movies should be coming sometime next week. But I'm so glad I finally have this out for you guys. So thank you guys so much for watching and thank you so much for tuning in to Channel BK. Peace out, guys.